So in this video, I want to share with you how I created what I call cinematic or epic lo-fi. I'm going to show you how I went from this to this. It's my intent to show you part of my process here and how I went about making creative decisions. Roads that I went down then decided to change or modify as I went. I find value in watching creators go through their processes and I'm sharing this video with you so that you might find some value in me going through mine. So I did edit it for brevity and I'm going to put in chapter markers so you can go to those points that interest you the most. Be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment saying what you liked about it or what you would have liked to see in it or even any questions you might have about the process. Okay, so I was uh, just watching a television program. I got the idea and the inspiration to do some more cinematic lo-fi here. And I'm gonna try and work some things out. I've been playing with a couple of ideas, try to figure out what's gonna work. Let's find out. So that's gonna be my tempo. I'm gonna be in four fours. Let me make sure I got everything set up here. So one and two and three and four. So it's about 55. Interesting. So I started off with a D chord here. Go to G minor, G minor slash D. Transferring to B flat. F over A. Back to the G minor here. And then back to D. Not bad. Fix a couple of things here in the file. I don't think I want that bass note right there. I want this A here to be B flat, so let's move that there. Yeah, I think I'll apply some light quant uh, quantization to this. There's eight. So eighth notes for quantizing. I had it at 60%, 60%, sorry. Bring it down to about, try 42. In fact, I don't really need to quantize the whole thing, so. It's pretty much just these last two bars that need a little bit of light quantization, so we'll just use this right here. Um, quantize settings, make sure. I'll do a little stronger on these ones since they needed a bit more. Probably about 55%, okay. Let's hear those last parts. I 
might go back and do like an accompaniment or there or something there because I, I have my melody in with my piano accompaniment as well because I'm pianist that way. Uh, but we'll see if I'll separate the melody out and maybe just do a basic accompaniment. Or maybe I'll just go back and choose another instrument and do a basic accompaniment. We'll see. Uh, now I think I want to put in some of those strings. So let's choose Opus. I'm using East West Opus right here. There, that's nice. I like that. Okay. That'll be good. Turn on the metronome again, and we'll start with the strings. It seems it was kind of difficult to anticipate uh, the, the full sounding of the strings, so they were kind of delayed after the piano. So I'm going to have to anticipate that by mm, almost an eighth note. So let's undo that and we'll try it again. Yeah, in fact, it seems like it would almost be nice to have a uh, moving cello part in there. So let me see if I can add that in. Okay, so in this section, you're going to see me struggle a little bit with the mod wheel. The reason being is that the modulation wheel in East West Hollywood Orchestra serves different purposes. In some, in some of the presets or the patches, they it acts like a um, like a volume knob or more to this extent a dynamic knob so it's not just volume but you know this the instrument's getting louder brighter or, or smaller and kind of maybe even a little bit more uh, diminished or duller uh, but in the case of the solo cello I think it acts more as a vibrato and I'm finding that out in this section So maybe I'll bring down that part a little bit.
Not bad. It almost has a bit of an out of Africa feel to it. Jane Barry, not bad. So let's find out if I go to splice, if I can get a, uh, like a brushwork kind of a thing. And we'll kind of drag it out. There we go. And I'll try playing from here and see how the blends. Nice. So the GAC gives me a bit of a base there, and then I'll go over to the basic lo-fi kit and see what I got here. Now I'll be real light and minimal with this, because I don't want to interfere too much with the orchestral movement. Okay, so let's go back, turn on the metronome. It seems like there's a bit of a thing going on with the snare there too. I'm gonna put a high pass, or sorry, low pass filter on this thing. In fact, I'll just go over to audio effects and drop in uh, EQ filters and just an auto filter on this audio. Bring that down. There we go. Drop another auto filter in here. And we're going to reverse and make it a high pass. There we go. Five beats per minute is pretty slow, so I might need to put a subdivider in there. Um, so let's find a shaker. And I'll put that in down here. It's a nice little eight bar loop there. And let's see what we can do with this. See that. Thank you. 
So same sort of thing. I'm going to go back to back to MIDI or not MIDI effects, audio effects, and drop in an auto filter on the channel. So and use a low pass kind of a thing, so we don't get so much of a bite on the thing. Yeah, that'll just help me keep time a little bit better. So I'm going to go back here and redo the drum part. Okay. I'll try this again. Take off the metronome and we're going to hear that back again. Bring down that cello opus just a little bit more. Okay, now we can get a little bit wacky with this. I want to see what happens if I throw a shimmer verb on, on the cello. It's kind of crazy. Let's go. which is shimmer it's, it's almost make the the cello develop its own upper strings uh, crazy but hey this is what electronic music's all about you can do crazy things in this Background's interesting. I'm gonna hear that again, but I'm gonna solo that cello. Almost sounds like tremolo strings, like the violins are doing tremolos above the cello. And then the B flats are hanging over the F sharps and it makes it really kind of uncanny. Let's hear that again in the mix. Maybe if we 
just kind of mixing the sugar. So let's go over to this, this coral pad actually. That's the knowledge, okay. Let's go up an octave. And let's just kind of browse here a little bit. And let's also put an audio effect. We'll put a, a, another auto filter on this one just to take off some of the edge. Okay. Probably too much of the third there in the chord. So, that last F sharp, let's make that a, whoops. Let's bring that up to A. And I want to mess with this a little bit. So maybe I should put it through the uh, H3000. But if I do, I have to print. So, yeah, what if I put it through crystals? And let's solo this. Yeah, I think I need to reinstate this D a bit. There we go. And now let's hear that back. In fact, let's go here. Yeah, so that's going through crystals on the uh, H9, the Eventide H9. That's what it sounds without it. And that's how it sounds like that. It's a little bit unstable, and I like it. Okay. want to reinforce that piano with something so I don't think I have oh I have Ableton instruments let's see if Ableton's got something here piano and keys okay okay we're gonna drag this up here right below the soft piano and then we're gonna expand it and we're gonna take the soft piano part we're just gonna drag it in right down here and we might have to mix that in. Let's see what our settings were for the piano. 
Labs. That's the other thing we can do too. We can send this to the synthetic hall and do that a little bit with this one too. And I'm going to already anticipate bringing it down some so it's not going to cut through too much. Try that. Okay. Okay, so let's put an EQ8 on this thing. Audio effects, EQ8. I'm gonna go back here and check it out. And turn this into a high pass filter. And bring it up a little bit. Kind of like a almost like a band pass thing here. All right, so throw it back in the mix. So we have a melody in the piano and a counter melody in the cello. Okay, so it is a melody in the piano, so, and stuck MIDI notes again. Okay, so let's put in a Xenology instrument, so go back to plugins, and we'll go to Rolling Cloud, and we're gonna throw in Xenology down here, and we're gonna go to Browse, and we're gonna choose Pianos, Good. All right. Bring in that little fat kid. All right, because it's down here. Bring that up right below here. And then bring it down here. And I should play it in a game, but for now, I'm just going to. Go in here, I'm gonna erase, because I don't really know my melody, I just improvised it right now. And let's sew this. Oh. Yeah, that was a melody note right there. In fact, I could probably all these ones down here are just, so let's try that again. These are harmony notes right here. You see that again there. Harmony there. Harmony there. That's going to be a melody note right there, this one right here. Good. And then let's go to MIDI effects and we'll go to pitch and we'll go down here and we'll throw it in front of Xenology. And then we're just going to bring this up one octave. We're going to give that some verb. And we're 
if we can download it. There we go. Come back here. Let's listen to it. Let's hear the piano parts. Now this almost has a harp-like quality. I wanted to throw a harp on now, but this might be sufficient. Not bad. Okay. Too bad that, uh, that Ableton doesn't have a notation feature like Live does, and I can see the notation out and probably memorize it and do it again. trying to make some really really mellow lo-fi here um but i'm <laughs> i have this desire to just punch that up a little bit i there's some rhythm, rhythmic things i can do with this but i'm going to save that for a later session this is not bad for this session so i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to like subscribe and comment see you in the next one